Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to go over how to configure an Ethernet connection to the Control Logix and Compact Logix PLC. Please take a moment to like this video and hit that subscribe button. We put out at least one automation video a week. So the big thing you're going to need is to know the IP address of your PLC. Now if you're using one of our trainers, the default IP address is going to be 192.168.1. If you have a new one straight out of the box, it's not going to have an IP address assigned. It's going to be looking for something to assign it. And honestly, especially with Windows firewalls and all these new security things, the easiest way to do it is with the PLC tools, SIM, IPE. I'll put a link to it in the description. But we're just going to plug into the Compact Logix. We'll plug into it. And then we're going to go to prepare IP address and I already have it configured for 192.168.110. Then we're going to go to assign address and we're going to use boot PDHCP. Okay, and it's set it and then we're going to press OK to set it to static. And that makes it where permanently that has an IP address of 192.168.110. Now if you're walking up to a machine, then you'll simply go to read unknown IP address and then it'll tell us that it's 192.168.110. Also gives us serial number, the model number, and the firmware version. Now that we have that configured, we're gonna plug our ethernet cable into the PLC. And I put all the settings of this PC at the default, so if you have a new laptop or you've never messed with ethernet configuration, then this is probably how yours is gonna look. Let's go to the start menu and type network, and then let's change network adapter options. You'll have several ways to get there, but let's go to network and sharing center, then find network and internet, and then scroll down and you'll see the network and sharing center. I think that way works for almost any Windows 10 PC. And now we're gonna go to change adapter settings. And right here, you're gonna have several options probably, we have a Bluetooth, we have a Wi-Fi connection, and then I have this Ethernet 4. This is a Realtek USB Ethernet adapter that I'm using to plug to the Compact Logix. So let's right click it and go to Properties. And then let's find Internet Protocol version 4. Right now it's set to obtain an IP address automatically. But since I'm plugging directly from my PC to the PLC, there isn't anything to actually assign an IP address to it. So let's click use the following IP address. And what you're going to want, now this is very basic, this is by no means a full networking lesson. You're going to want the first three octets, or these first three numbers here, to be the same as whatever the PLC is, and the fourth one to be something different. So in our case we had 192, 168, 1. And we're just going to make this one, two, three. And then if you'll hit the tab button, it's going to automatically fill in a submet of 255, 255, 255, zero. And that'll work great. So let's click OK. And then go ahead and close all these prompts out. And now let's go to RS links. We're going to go to configure drivers. Now that is kind of the two headed snake here icon, or you can go to communications, configure drivers. And under available driver types, we're going to go and select the Ethernet IP driver. Now what I love about the Ethernet IP driver is that if you're not on a real complicated network, like in this case we're plugged directly in, it'll do the rest of the work for you. So we're going to click add new, and then we'll just leave it at the default and click OK. And we want to select which adapter we're going to be looking for PLCs over. And that's going to be that Realtek USB adapter in my case. So we're going to select OK and close it out. And now let's go to the Ethernet IP. And right away, there is our compact logic. It's 1769 L16ER-BB1B. And right there, there's the IP address we assigned to it, 192.168.110. Okay, so let's say you did those exact steps and your PLC didn't show up. That means one of two things. That means either your PC can't talk to the PLC or something is blocking those broadcast packets that lets RS Links discover PLCs out on the network. So let's tackle whether your PC can talk to the PLC first. And the easiest way to do that is through the command prompt. So go to your start menu and type command 
and you should see it come up, command prompt. And then we're gonna type P-I-N-G and the IP address that we believe is in our PLC, which is 192.168.1.10. And it's gonna give you a lot of info, but the main thing we're looking for is that we are getting replies from it. The timing and all that, just ignore all that. Now just to show what it would look like if you weren't getting it, I'm gonna type ping 192.168.1.11, which I know is not used on our two device network. And instead of getting those immediate replies, we're getting slower replies and we're getting, okay, destination was unreachable, request timeout, request timeout, request timeout. If you see this, if you see these request timeout or destination unreachable, Stop everything. Don't try to continue to connect to the PLC through RS links and all that. You need to get your network set up on your PC configured correctly to talk to the PLC. Now the other thing that could happen is maybe you get the ping successful, but you still can't connect to it. And you'll see this a lot in larger networks where maybe there's VLANs going on and VPN and all those other complicated acronyms about networking. And what happens in those cases is it's blocking a lot of those broadcast packets because let's say you have a network that has, you know, several hundred or maybe several thousand devices on it and it's going over the internet, it's going everywhere else. You can get a lot of static really running across that network. So a lot of your more managed switches will filter these packets out. And in that case, we're going to need to use the Ethernet devices driver. So we're going to go back to RS links. And you don't need to delete this Ethernet IP driver. In fact, once you configure it, just leave it there. We're going to go back to communications and configure drivers. And this time, we're going to select the Ethernet devices driver. And we'll click add new. And you can leave it as default. And this time, it's going to ask us, where do I need to go look for PLC? So the Ethernet IP driver, the devices kind of shout out, hey, here I am. But the devices driver, the PC is going to go and look and say, okay, 192.168.110, are you really there? And so that's what we need to do here. So we're going to type in a station of 192.168.1.10. And if you had more, you could click the add new button here and you could add additional ones, you know, dot 11, dot 12, however many you need to do this way. And click OK. Close. And then we're gonna to go to this ethernet driver and there's our PLC again. So that's the two ways to configure RS links to communicate with the Compact Logics and Control Logics PLCs. And actually the MicroLogix, the Micro 800s, really any Allen Bradley ethernet enabled PLC, that's how you do it. Okay, let's go ahead and use the ethernet IP driver and go online for PLC. So we're gonna open up our getting started program that comes with all our PLC trainers. Then there's several ways to go online. You could click right here and click go online, or you can go to communications and go online. But I like, to, especially as you're getting started, to use this Who Active because it gives you all the options and it lets you make sure that you're able to navigate to the path you want. So we click on our Ethernet IP driver. There's our PLC and we're gonna click go online. Okay, and we're online. See, we're in remote mode. Controller's okay, IO's okay. This is one video to bookmark for later because as you're going through your class or you're learning on one of our trainers, you're going to do this at the beginning. You're gonna have your ethernet and everything all set up and you're gonna go through all these exercises. You're gonna be concentrating, rightfully so, on you know how to program certain things, how to, you know, do this certain sequencing steps or whatever your particular exercise is and you're going to forget about how to actually configure your communications and that's the biggest call i get from people is they say hey i don't i took a plc class i thought i did really good but i got out here on this machine and i can't figure out how to connect to it or maybe well no, in the case of compact logics isn't much of a deal but maybe you can't even figure out what cable you need so save this video for a later date because you'll probably need to come back to it next we're going to be talking about how to upload and download programs through studio 5000 till next time hi this is Tim, and this is amber of tw controls we run the automation store hey thanks for finding our channel here's a playlist with some similar videos and youtube thinks you'll like this video please like our video and subscribe to our channel 
And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.